Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. So, uh, good news and bad news. First, the bad news. Don't worry, nothing bad happened over here. Uh, the bad news is that, uh, as you can see, I'm still not in the studio. So, uh, we're going to have to do just two more videos, today's and tomorrow's, which I was hoping would be the portfolio review. We're going to have to move those to Monday and Tuesday, okay? As some of you guys know from yesterday's video, my grandma has some uh, serious health uh, issues right now. She's uh, very old, um, admittedly, and, uh, well, we all... Or we're all gonna go through that eventually at uh, one point of our lives, right? So we as a family, we're here with her. Uh, she, she's feeling okay, but we know that uh, her time might be over relatively soon. Hopefully we can still have her a couple of days. Maybe we'll get all the way till Christmas. That would be really really cool for our family, uh, but we'll see. Uh, thank you everyone for your prayers and your, and your um, good wishes. So uh, continuing from yesterday's video, um, that's the good news. The good news is that my grandma is, is feeling better, of course, but uh, of course, yeah, the bad news. Uh, we're going to have to move the portfolio review to Monday and Tuesday when I'm back at the studio and things are a little bit better. So I'm going to open the knife uh, tutorial that we were doing yesterday. A lot of you guys seem to like it, and um, I think we're going to do this. I'm going to try and do this at least once every week. So at least once every week, we're going to have a basic modeling tutorial, and I'll show you some quick like tips and tricks, like most of the complex shapes that I've learned throughout my career. How would I tackle them, hopefully, with a small little project like this one? And there was a... a <coughs> sorry. Let me turn off the camera because it really bothers me that it, the quality of the light and everything is really bad. So let's just turn this off. And uh, some of you uh, or, or someone in the comments was asking, why did we not use any UVs? Like, why didn't we UV the, the thing? And uh, the simple answer is, well, I didn't want the video to go super long. And the other one is we, we were uh, like, I knew we were going to do basic materials for the object. So we were going to have like this perfect materials like no scratches no nothing they're just gonna be like uniform materials you usually do this kind of thing when you're doing like a product render so if i were selling this knife uh, then i would probably use like completely clean materials however we can add textures and for that we are going to need uvs so let's jump onto my uv method my trusty uv method and we can do it on this one even though it's a post uh, that's fine we can we can still work uh, with this one so i'm going to isolate this so that we have uh, this guy right here and let's start with the blade so the first thing i do whenever i do uvs and this is my method here inside of Maya, I grab all of the objects and I go UV and I delete the UVs. Simple. That just means that there's no UVs, there's no UV information and we can start clean, make sure that everything is nice, um, nice and clean. So I'm going to grab the blade and I'm going to go into UV, planar mapping, and I'm going to use a camera based projection to a planar mapping. So this pretty much is like taking a picture of the object and now the UV matches what I'm seeing here in the camera. Uh, sometimes you can even use this if you're gonna have like a shot on on a composition and there's an object that you don't want to go through the process of UVing because it's very complex and you're only gonna be seeing that object from that specific point of view. Then doing a camera match projection is it's perfectly fine. You just paint on top of this thing and then everything looks fine. Uh, however, uh, I do want to do it uh, properly. So now that we have the vase here, I'm gonna grab the object, go into UV, and I'm gonna use this 3D cut and sew UV tool, which is gonna be the tool that will allow me to um, well divide this into two parts. So I'm going to go to the middle section right here, which I think is the best uh, line to use uh, to cut from. Uh, that's one of the draw sides of, of working with UVs, and that's the fact that UVs will always have a seam line. So you're always going to see a little bit of a cut here and there. Now over here, I'm also going to add a couple of cuts on this corners right here. So I'm probably, or let me think about this. Maybe not. Let, let's see how this looks first. So I'm going to go UV, UV editor. I'm going to grab the whole thing here and I'm going to press control U which is the unfold button and we're going to get this so yeah this is this is no no bueno not good so as you can see we get a very weird distortion now it could be sometimes it happens like this it could be uh, no actually it can't be because we did freeze transformation I was going to say it could be like the the freeze transformation thing but no uh, in this case we definitely need to do a couple more cuts so I'm going to go here to the blade and I'm going to go right about here so I'm going to go object mode again UV 3D cut and let's cut uh, this line right here until it hits the middle line that we have over here. Double click. See how we create this whole thing. There we go. Double click here and here. So we're pretty much um, splitting like the blade of the object, this thing right here, from uh, the rest of the of the knife. And actually, since this thing is a little bit complex, I'm actually gonna cut it over here as well, like this. So this pretty much separates the handle, this sort of like pommel or base, and the blade. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, cut this corner. And this is very important. Whenever you have a shape that's very square like, like this thing right here, uh, I call this the flaps. And, and I like to cut the flaps of the object so that it unfolds a little bit more nicely because otherwise you're going to have a lot of stress on your, on your uh, UV maps and that could generate some issues later down the line. So this little flap right here, yes, we are going to see a little bit of the, of the cut, uh, but it shouldn't be that much of an issue. You can also go into edge mode. Select the edges that you want to cut, like one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And go UV and say cut UV edges. Any of those methods work. So now, technically, I should have six islands, two on each side or three on each side. And there we go. So I'm just going to grab all of this and hit Control U. And there we go. This looks a lot uh, nicer, a lot better. Now, I still find the, the overall shape to be looking a little bit weird, to be honest. And that, oh, that's because we have information. We have scale information. That's really, really bad. So I'm going to grab this thing. I'm going to freeze the transformations, grab everything again, and hit Control U. And there you go. See how now this looks like a lot nicer, closer to what we, what we want. And uh, that's it. That's the UV for the first piece for my blades. Now, this is not laid out properly. Don't worry. We're going to handle that, uh, pun intended. <laughs> We're going to handle that as soon as we finish the handle. So here we go. Now, for the handle, one quick advice that I can give you. I know that this is going to be mirror, so why bother doing double the work? Let's just do the UVs for one piece first and then the other one. So we don't have any UVs, so we're just going to go again UV, planar mapping. Oh, sorry. U object mode. So right click, object mode, select the object, go UV, planar mapping. Now, some, of, some people ask me, why, I, why do I do this? Why not just like automatic mapping or whatever? Well, first of all, um, when you're doing planar mapping, you're not going to get any cuts except for places of the object that are open. So that, that's good for me because I don't want to get any weird cuts that I don't need. Second of all, there's a bug here inside of Maya, and I've, I've seen it, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but just to prevent that one. Whenever you do like a planar mapping, like let's say I have an object, like a, like a cube, and I do a planar mapping, let's say from X uh, axis, right? So planar X. So what happens here is none of the faces on the top or on the side have any surface area here on the UVs. And sometimes when you do this uh, and you try to unfold, it doesn't unfold because it doesn't know that those uh, faces should have any like area. So when you do it like a three quarter view, you, you make sure that, that, that at least there's a little bit of area everywhere for every single face. And therefore you don't get that uh, bug that I'm talking about. So it's just a habit that I have uh, developed throughout the years. So UV, 3D cut, and so UV tool, we're going to cut uh, right here on the border, like on the back border. As you can see, if you double click, it selects the whole edge and it stops when it doesn't know where to flow. So it's very easy. And we can just grab like the corners here because again, it's a good idea to help. Those are like the little flaps. Um, the easiest way for me to explain those little flaps and why we do them is uh, most of you at one point in your life probably assemble a D6 uh, papercraft dice. So I remember when I was in um, Hill, we called it uh, Primaria, which is like primary school, like the early when you learn how to read and, and, all, stuff, and all, all that stuff. And you usually have one of those guys, right? And this little flaps, you need those flaps to, to assemble your, your cube. Otherwise, you can't just like stick anything. You use uh, some like glue stick over here. So it, it's kind of like doing that, like helping this whole surface create those little flaps so that when it unfolds, it unfolds in a nicer way. So if I do this, Control-U, you're going to see those little flaps over there. Uh, we still have an issue with the scale. Very important that we fix that one. So freeze transformation, grab the object, grab all of the shells, control U, and there we go. That looks way, way nicer as you can see. Now we mirror, of course. We're gonna mirror this to the other side. There we go. And the cool thing is, since we've uh, mirrored everything, um, we can just hit control U and we're gonna have, each of them is gonna have its own individual um, asset or element. There we go. So now we finally go onto the little uh, cylinders right here. And uh, we're going to do the same thing. So UV, planar mapping to create our nice little like phonograph, the UV, the first UV element. And for cylinders, it's a slightly different. For cylinders, I like to use this sort of like a mantra. I call it my mantra because I repeat it so many times every, every time I teach um, uh, UVs. And it's a UV, planar, or sorry, uh, 3D cut, and it's cap, cap, and across. So you're going to cut one of the caps off, cup, cut the other cap off, and then across. So you're going to learn this one by memory. It's cap, cap, and across. In Spanish, I call it tapa, tapa, a lo largo. So it's cap, tapa, cap, tapa, a lo largo, across. And there we go. So now, just a matter of grabbing these guys, UV shells, control U to unfold, control U to unfold, 
uh, so holding control U. That's very weird. Control L. There we go. Control U and Control L. And now Control L is layout. But I'm gonna do another layout because now all of our pieces here have the layout. So I'm just gonna grab everything here and hit Control L. And what Control L will do, as you can tell, is it will assign or it will it will try to place every single thing inside of my uh, UB tile. Now, if you don't get this exact organization or, or the layout when doing this process, it might be because on the modify options, on the layout option, you don't have this thing called shell pre-rotation set to vertical and shell pre-scaling set to preserve 3D ratios. This is going to make sure that all of the elements have the exact same size that they have on the 3D world is represented here on the 2D world. Therefore, no single part will have more resolution than any of the other ones. And the vertical uh, setting, as you can see, will try to make sure everything is vertical over here. So yeah. That's pretty much it. So now uh, what I can do, which is very cool, is I can actually grab all of these guys, like the wood table, everything, and just export them back again. So I'm just going to export selection. And remember, I think I exported here the knife. And I'm going to jump really quickly again into Marmoset to show you how these UVs will now help me add a little bit more texture to the whole thing. So I know this is a little bit more advanced. We were finished with the like the Maya basic stuff, the UV basic stuff, and now we're using Marmoset, which by the way, if you guys want to try it out, Marmoset gives you a 30-day free trial uh, for this new version, Marmoset 4. And uh, it was on discount like last week for, for Cyber Week and Cyber Monday and Black Friday and all that stuff. So you might want to check it out. Maybe there's a, a little bit of a discount over there. If not, wait for Christmas. And, and Christmas uh, at Christmas time, they always release a, a little bit of a code. So I'm going to go here, let's open one of our recent files, which is this knife render that we were doing, remember, yesterday? Uh, that was looking really, really tight, really nice, right? Uh, I'm going to turn off my RTX right now, the ray tracing here, so that we can focus on this one. And uh, now let's talk about texture, okay? So traditionally, I would take these elements and bring them into something like Substance Painter or something, and um, could be Substance Painter and do like even Photoshop and texture them. However, I'm going to keep it simple right now. And the one thing that you can do is we can just look for a couple of textures. We can look for some textures like, let's say, Damascus steel. Have you guys heard about this one? Uh, if you are into like weapon crafting and stuff, uh, there's this technique that they use where they create like a, like a layer thing with uh, steel. And, um, and once you like... Uh, forge the steel you get this super super cool pattern of uh, of like ripples and stuff because you can like fold the steel on top of each other like several times and you get this very organic looking shape um and we can look like damascus steel texture and if we look for this we're going to find all of these elements so for instance this one right here very cool has a watermark watermark so not ideal uh but we can look for something like uh Let's see, I'm, I'm looking, there, th this one's perfect. So I'm just gonna download this image. And uh, usually you wanna save things on your source image folder. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna, on my default uh, tab for Maya, I'm gonna save this as Damascus, Damascus Steel. There we go. Now, what we can do is we can go into Marmoset, go into the blend material, which is the original material that we added for the knife. And if we go into the albedo map, we can, um, plug in the uh, texture, the albedo texture. So I'm going to go here to my default project, source images, and I'm going to grab my Damascus. Even if this is not 4x4, four four, should be fine. And as you can see, we get this very nice effect. Let me turn off the uh, focus thing. There we go. And we get this very, very nice effect. Now, of course, this is uh, darkening the whole uh, object. It's making it look a little bit dark. And that's because, well, the, well of course, the Damascus still is a little bit darker in this area. And the resolution is not super, super great. Uh, however, what we should be able to do, let me see if this is tileable. That would be great if it is. But if we can go here to the texture and increase the, the tiling of the texture. Ooh, it seems like it is. There we go. And by increasing the, the size of the texture, as you can see, we're going to get way, way more detail. And the knife is going to look a little bit nicer. Now, we could also go here to the color and change the color. Like if we want like a red or a bluish tint. I think I'm going to go for like a like a bluish tint here. So I'm going to keep it somewhere along these lines. There we go. And uh, right now, as you can see, the, the shininess of the object is uniform. So it's shining perfectly uniform for everything. I don't want that. So I'm going to go down here into the reflection tab, or sorry, the roughness map. And I'm going to insert the exact same elements. I'm going to say insert. 
And as you can see now, different parts of the Damascus texture is going to shine in a different way. The darker it is, the shinier it's going to be. We can invert this, of course, if we want to have like a different effect. We can play around with this roughness thing. I'm going to keep it like this. Just play around with this one. And that way we can create like a very, very shiny effect. But still, some areas won't be as shiny as everything else. So you can see that we are, we're seeing a little bit of those like reflections over there. So that creates a very, very nice texture. Now let's go back to our ray tracing. And you're going to see that that thing, that detail over there. It's going to look really, really nice. I'm going to move the lights so that we can appreciate the texture a little bit more. Uh, kind of want to find, there we go. I think that one, that one looks a little bit nicer. So we see a little bit of the texture over here. And that's it. Now, since we're texturing the uh, the blade right here, uh, a good idea would be to texture the, the handle as well, because right now it's a very, very plain effect. So I'm going to teach you, I think we've talked about this one before, um, but there's this site called Polyhaven, and you can find some very cool textures in here. If you don't have access to Substance Source, there's some very nice uh, like textures over here. So I'm just going to go into the Texture tab. As I mentioned before, the internet here is a little bit slow, so bear with me. I'm just going to look for wood, and uh, yeah, like this wood table, that one looks really nice. I know that it's supposed to be for a table, but I, I kind of like the dark color, like the dark red color. So I'm just going to click this. I'm going to go over here, and let's select which maps we want. So I definitely want this ambient ambient occlusion roughness. Uh, wait. Can we zip? I'm going to download the zip file, and I want only the ambient occlusion roughness. I want the diffuse, and I want the normal map on... Uh, on the GL, OpenGL. So I'm just gonna download these things. It says it's gonna take 37 minutes. <laughs> it's just a little bit ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm just gonna, um, let's see if this goes a little bit faster. Shouldn't be taking that long, my God. I mean, I know it's 4K, there we go, five minutes. Okay, that's a little bit better. Three minutes, two minutes, there you go. You can do it, man, one minute. The audience can wait one minute, I'm pretty sure. So, okay, it seems like uh, 50 seconds. So while that thing is downloading, let's go over here. And yeah, as you can see, we get this very, very nice effect. Now, if we want to change a couple of things, I mean, there, there's not much that we can change. For instance, here, the anisotropy that we added, we can tweak it a little bit to get a little bit more shine. Uh, but yeah, like the, the color that we're using, it's, it's definitely like darkening everything. Uh, we can turn off sRGB. Let's see how that looks. That kind of looks a little bit better. That's, that's delinearizing the elements. So we will get a little bit of a, of a different effect. Now we can play around with the roughness, and I think this one's going to work. Uh, now, this is not something that you normally do with the colors. You, you usually do want to keep sRGB turned on. But in this case, I think it's a, it's a good idea to um, to turn it on to get a little bit of variation here so that it looks a little bit closer to the to the reference. Now we might be able to to bring the light back now. And see, like It looks very cool, but it's uh, it doesn't let us appreciate the, the colors properly. So there we go. That's a little bit better. Let's see if this thing oh, almost there. Um, what else can we do here? Quick thing, we can add fog. Fog is great. Fog adds a little bit of uh, like this effect of a uh, <laughs> very cool thing, right? So if you want to add fog to your scene, Marmo said it has a really quick fog setup. Just a quick filler there while we wait for the download. Okay, the download's ready. So after you've downloaded this, you're gonna, of course, uh, go into the options. Oh, by the way, see that? Blender 3.0 is out. You might wanna check that out. I'm pretty sure Alejandro is uh, preparing something about that one as well. And uh, this one, so I'm actually going to release, uh, let's do source images again. So I'm just going to grab here the textures, and this four guys, I'm going to move them over here. There we go. So as you can see, we have this one, which is the ambient occlusion roughness metallic. We have this one, which is the, the um, diffuse, and then the normal map, uh, which is, uh, for some reason, an, an EXR, but that's fine. And it's just a matter of connecting. So I'm going to go to this plane right here, and let's start connecting stuff. So on the LP, the map, we're going to have the color, of course. Let's get rid of this color over here so that we can see the color of the wood. Look at that, beautiful. And then I'm going to grab this one right here, which is the roughness. I'm going to grow up here. And this is a, a crazy map because this crazy map actually has three maps inside of it. On the red channel, we have the ambient occlusion, which in this case, there's none. On the blue channel, we have the metallic option. And on the green channel, we have the roughness. So in this case, we want to access the roughness, which is the green channel. And there we go. So as you can see, certain areas of the element are going to be shiny, and other areas are not going to be shiny. Like the dark areas are not going to be shiny, and we get this very nice effect. We can invert it, of course, if you want to, and play around with all of the settings. It's kind of like modifying the roughness and, and getting some uh, different variations. That's uh, up to you to decide which one looks better. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, pretty much it. And now the normal map, that one's definitely going to help. That one goes up here in the surface map. 
So it's just a matter of dra dragging and dropping this one on the normal map. And we should be able to see. Do we see it? Oh, it didn't drop. Give me just one second. Oh, uh, it says unknown compression type. Oh, yeah, I was actually. It's kind of weird that this normal map. So let's just do JPEG and uh, let's go. Let's change this to Blender and let's see if we can just download like the normal map. There we go. So <laughs> loading a little bit there. Let's save this image. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Let's go over here to source images. And now we just drag and drop the normal map on the normal map here. And we should get a little bit of uh, of uh, detail here on the on the element. Just a little bit of a push there on the on the wood grain. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. This is this will be like the second part of a let's say of a little um, creation of a prop, right? Now now we can definitely go here. We are using ray tracing. Let me show you another one. Let's go back to the camera. Let's turn on uh, in our lens. Let's turn on our depth uh, of field again and focus on the on the guy right here on the knife. Now I'm gonna go all the way down here and we have this thing called uh, the vignette, which is the sort of like darkening effect that we get on the on the knife to kind of give it more emphasis to the whole thing. And uh, yeah, that's it. This is this is our, our, our final render for today, guys. Again, thank you very much for your for your patience. We are gonna continue with the uh, with the portfolio review on Monday once I'm back at the studio. And um, yeah, hopefully there's little tricks here about the like, quick texturing using procedural textures, styleable textures, and um, and some of the UV information is helpful to you guys. Um, that's it for now. I'll see you back uh, tomorrow. Bye bye.